More turmoil at Twitter. Journalists covering Twitter's ban of an account that tracked Elon Musk's private plane, they found themselves banned from Twitter without notice. Twitter owner Elon Musk saying the accounts were suspended for doxing, despite the journalists saying that their tweets contained no information. Joining us with more, we've got Yahoo Finance's Dan Halley. Dan, just break this one down for us and what the latest is in the craziness out of Twitter. Yeah, well, so much for free speech on uh, Elon Musk's Twitter, eh? Uh, this uh, basically happened uh, where uh, a few uh, journalists from different outlets, um, uh, New York Times, uh, Washington Post, uh, had been reporting on the Elon Jet Twitter account, which Elon had uh, suspended from the service. The Elon Jet Twitter account had posted uh, tracking information about uh, Elon's private jet as it was flying, where it was going, uh, things along those lines. And they were reporting on the fact that it was suspended um, and that it was kind of counterintuitive to what Musk had said, where, you know, he wanted full free speech and that anything that was illegal would be taken down uh, and anything that was spammy uh, or bots would be taken down as well. So, you know, this isn't that kind of account. Uh, the reporters then were suspended, he said, uh, for doxing, which, by the way, this is not doxing. This uh, information is publicly available, flight tracking information uh, that people use, uh, you know, airline enthusiasts, uh, People like that use this kind of information all the time. Uh, doxing is when, you know, if you're a person, uh, someone is trying to get back at you or something along those lines, they post your address, uh, they post where you work, uh, they may post private photos of you, things along those lines. Uh, Elon Musk is the second, now second, richest person uh, on the planet. He's not exactly a private citizen either. So this isn't really doxing. And it's worth noting that this wasn't uh, data on where he was, despite what he says, uh, this is where his jet was. So his jet flies sometimes without him, um, not necessarily him on board. Uh, regardless, uh, he went on to then suspend uh, those reporters uh, and then uh, joined a Twitter spaces last night where there was a conversation among some of those reporters uh, and their colleagues, uh, again, saying that, that he was going to suspend them and that it was doxing. And then when there was pushback on that, uh, he quickly quit the uh, the chat and then disabled Twitter spaces to he to uh, what he said was fix a longstanding bug. So uh, these reporters are suspended for seven days. Um, you know, there's really been uh, uh, no other comment outside of Elon posting some polls on when he should reinstate them. Uh, the first poll uh, was asking if you know they should be banned for longer or restated now or uh, uh, be suspended for seven days. It came back that people said they should be reinstated now. He then had a set has a second poll going saying that they should be banned uh, or be reinstated now. And again, people are saying that they should be reinstated now. So uh, you know I don't necessarily know what that means for Elon and his popularity on the platform that he bought, but. You know, this clearly is uh, kind of blowing up in his face, especially after he said that he was going to do all of this in the name of free speech. But Dan, it also can't be, it can't help his cause to bring back advertisers on the platform, right? Yeah, I mean, look, this is just a complete black eye. And it seems like he's, you know, the, the whole thing was uh, advertisers were nervous that he was going to allow unfettered free speech. He said he wasn't going to do that. Uh, and then he reinstated a bunch of accounts that were banned for, you know, posting uh, terrible content. Um, you know, advertisers were clearly bothered by that. They had been pulling back. The idea being that they don't want their products, um, you know, tweets about their products showing up next to some white nationalist, right? So they were nervous about that. Uh, he had kind of this rant about Apple and Amazon or, you know, most, uh, Apple rather. Uh, he met with Tim Cook. Apparently, Apple is now advertising there again. Uh, Amazon is apparently uh, advertising there again. But, uh, you know, there's a bunch of others that still uh, may or may not be back. Uh, there's no real clarity on that quite yet. But, you know, if you're an advertiser uh, and you were hoping for some kind of stability at this place uh, after this, you know, whole rigmarole of him wanting to buy it, not wanting to buy it, uh, then buying it, and then, you know, the whole free speech aspect of it, this does not help at all. You're right. This this kind of just throws everything uh, up in the air again because th there's no clarity as to if there's a clear set of rules. He said that he was going to wait for a, a moderation council at one point to make any kind of content uh, decisions, and he clearly hasn't done that uh, having this kind of uh, blanket amnesty for folks uh, to come back on the platform, uh, then banning people uh, like Elon Jet after specifically saying he wasn't because he was part of, uh, he was hoping for more free speech. So, you know, th this is all kind of 
uh, seemingly by the seat of his pants. And if you're an advertiser, as I said, looking for stability, this is far from it. Yeah, Dan, I mean, of course, for even the ad campaigns that have come back, there's a question of how much of that is just seasonal. And once you get through the holiday season, some of those promotions and the campaigns to really move through some inventory, once they subside, then what? Will Twitter still be making money? That's perhaps a whole separate advertising conversation. But I think one thing that you started to get to at the end there was just what's the end game for Elon, for Twitter, and, and where it could even continue to or grow from here? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, he he's pushing the the Twitter Blue service. The, you know, uh, that's uh, available now. Um, you can get a check mark after a, uh, a waiting period of launching your account. Uh, you do get the ability to edit tweets. Um, so that's out there. Um, he also, you know, obviously uh, still is generating revenue through uh, advertising, though he wants to move away from that. Um, you know, it, it seems as though this is kind of like. He wants it to be almost his little clubhouse uh, where he only lets people on uh, to talk to each other uh, that he agrees with. And if they seem to run afoul of him, uh, they'll be banned under some kind of, you know, weird definition of what he thinks is violating the terms of service. Um, it's worth pointing out that the guy owns the platform, right? So I guess he can do uh, what he wants, when he wants, um, because it's his platform. But, you know, for, for him to come in and say that this was a free speech, uh, issue and he wanted, uh, as much speech on there as possible. I mean, this is just hypocrisy. Um, and uh, I think as far as how the platform continues forward, you know, perhaps he needs to take a step back, uh, let someone else kind of call the shots there, uh, rather than him, uh, maybe focus on Tesla. Obviously, people are uh, shareholders of Tesla can't be happy about this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, SpaceX is obviously uh, a major concern for uh, uh, national security. Uh, maybe you know he needs to focus more on that. Um, and oh yeah, the FTC is looking at him to uh, ask if you know how Twitter will continue to abide by that consent decree regarding consumer privacy. So you know, there's a lot going on here, um, and it seems as though you know there's these these issues that he's kind of jumping onto that he doesn't necessarily need to. So very true. All right, y'all find Tech Editor Dan Halley. Thanks so much.